Hello, it's Rhonda Thomas, and we're about to do Managerial Accounting's Chapter 5, Foundational 15. So let's get started. It shouldn't take us too long. All right, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And so here we are, uh, and I got to go to the Foundation 15, which I haven't done yet. So I've got uh, a contribution income statement going. I still think this is the best way to do most of this so you can see what they're what they're talking about. Chapter 15 is the cost volume profit relationships. So this is a pretty good opportunity to kind of see how different costs affect things. So let's get started. And I think we're using the same information, hopefully for all of these, okay? So what is the contribution margin per unit? So we've got uh, 20,000 in sales, 12,000 in variable expenses. So I just filled this in based on this. Then if we sell, a thousand items that's the sales volume for the year by the way our relevant range is between 500 to 1500 in order for fixed costs of 6000 to remain about the same then i was able to come up with if sometimes they don't give you the sales price so you have to divide the number that you're going to sell by your total sales so that means each of them are sale priced at 20 the variable expenses are 12 and that leaves $8 as our contribution margin per unit. CM per margin, contribution margin per unit is eight bucks. So there it is, let's put eight in. Okay, and I've got some things already started. So now we want the contribution margin ratio so we want the margin, and I've already got it up here, but if you were to use what we have, a contribution margin divided by sales, and you could do it in total or you could do it by the unit. So, but I've got, it should be 40%. So I've got to change it to a percentage, I think. There it is, 40%. So let me make these green so we know what we've answered. And then you're going to do another set similar to this. I would make myself a, a contribution income statement just like this on a piece of paper with a pencil so you could erase things and so forth. But if you could do it in Excel, even better, even better. Okay, how about the expense ratio? Um, oh, let me finish two, sorry, two, contribution margin ratio is 40. So if you know what the contribution margin is, then all you have to do is the amount that adds up to 100. So I'm just going to use what I have up here. Well, a variable expense. So 12 divided by 20 should get you 60%. Okay, we want to make that green. All right, so 60% is number three, a variable expense. And sometimes they use the word cost. So don't let that fool you. It's the same thing. Number four. Okay, so if we had prepared the following contribution format income statement based on a sales volume of a thousand. So what if they sold just one more? Okay, just one more. I am going to make this freeze. And if you want to watch, you go to view and you pick freeze panes. And now it'll stay put. See how I did that? Yeah. Took me a while to remember how to do that. <laughs> so we have the contribution margin ratio, which is 60. So let's put this here and we'll make... So we want to know what the change in the operating income will be. 
we should be able to use this any time. So we want 40%, 40%, and the ch change in sales is one. So that's, uh, that is, and it's in dollars, okay? So we want one times 20, so that's 20 bucks. And then the change in expenses, they didn't say was any, okay? So now change in profits, If there was, if there's a zero, so then you take this times this minus this. Okay, so I know that zero isn't staying put, but, and this is your contribution ratio, your change in sales dollars. Wish that said change in sales dollars. Okay. And then change in fixed expenses. Okay. Make that just a little bit bigger. All right. So it's 40% of 20. Mm -hmm. And 40% of 20 is eight. So that's why one more unit, right? One more unit, and I'll show you when I put it in here. So let's just do the calculation, change in profits. All right, is 40 times 20, and then you would put that in parentheses and subtract the change in fixed expenses, which there is none. There is none at all. So it's eight bucks. Okay. And I can put this in my income statement. I can go 1001. Okay. And look, here's how much net operating went up. Right. Okay. So you can try it out. Let's check my work. Make sure we're right. Did I check my others? Yes. Okay, we're on to five now. Okay, so let's keep using this. If sales were to decline 900 units, so we're going to use this again right here. Okay, but number five. Okay, so if sales decline to 900 units, let's go back to where they were. Okay, they were 1,000. Okay, so, um, and we're going to use our contribution margin is 40%. Um, if the sales change, so let's tear this to a negative, right? So if it goes down, so let's calculate that minus, if it goes down 100, 100 times $20, Okay, there is that. There's the change in the sales. Okay, is there any change in... Um, okay, so change in sales. And there is no... So it's going to cause it to go down $800. So net operating income. Okay, so let's just plug it in. It should be... 1200 right so um i'll just put net operating income over here and with a thousand units okay thousand units net operating income is two thousand dollars okay but 900 units net operating income actually goes down to eight hundred dollars so we should have
$1,200. So this should be the new. So this is the change. Change in profits. There we go. So we're just going to add these two together. So we should have 1,200 and we'll test it in my little income statement. So let's put 1,200 and check it. And it's right. And now you can look at it. So what if it drops to 900? Ooh, so down it goes. Okay, down it goes. Let's go to six. If the selling price increases by two, and the sales volume decreases by 100, what would be the net operating income? Okay, what would be the net operating income? So the changes again. Now, the sale price, this is not going to affect. All right, so we already know. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so let me see what happens. All right, so if we up the sales price by $2, we up the sales price by $22. See, it changes the contribution margin. So you can't use this, okay, because it's not comparing the same. All right, so... Um, let's see what we can do here. What we'll do is we'll make another uh, income statement and feed it in just like and we're going to leave this one alone. So I'm going to go back to 2000 here and back to 20. So this is our original. So let's make a new one. Okay, let's make a new one bring it down here and plug in what they say is happening. So we increase our sales volume to 2100. Okay, 2100. Hmm. Okay, so I got to make sure that this, okay, because uh, I programmed that a little bit differently. So now it's D47. Okay, I got to Make sure that gets changed. Okay, and then our price is going to be $22. And we also have to change this. So you have to be careful if you're using formulas because uh, I made, anyway, so here it is. Now let's just double check, right? Here's the, here's the, Sales price is going to go up, up $2. And we're also increasing the up $2 and up 100 units. Okay, up 100 units. So we made that happen. What is the net operating income? Well, you say, well, what if I didn't have this? Well, it's just a good idea to go ahead and do it because uh, now we have a contribution margin of 10 instead of eight, right? 10 instead of eight, we're selling 100 more. We could do one of these at a time, but they're asking for both. So if you go back to just the regular 20, right, dollar and just increase a hundred, right? That's back to that old $8 contribution margin. So with just increasing a hundred units of sales, we go up $800. But then when we go up $2 to $22, we actually go up $5,000. So there's $5,000 difference. So if so, they're just saying, what would net operating income be? They're not asking for the difference. A couple of them did ask for that on your coursework. What's the new net operating income? Okay. So once again, it's worth, okay. 
Oh, 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 guess what? I didn't follow very closely. One is an increase and one is a decrease. Let's try this again. So um, it went up $2, but it's going to go down. There we go. It's going down 100. So up $2, down uh, 100. So let's see here. So up $2. Now let's go down 100 units. And over here is up $2. Okay. So 13,000 is what it should be if my calculations are correct. Uh-uh. Okay, hold on. Let me go see what I'm doing just a minute. Okay, we are doing this right. Okay, we are doing this right because what it says is if the selling price increases by $2, hey, uh, let me start over. Let me start over. Hold on. Uh, and I need to double check. Um, we have sales volume of 1,000, so I'm not sure where I got the 2,000. Let me go back. So then 900 here. So there we are. So it is right. It is right. I was wrong. I was putting in something wrong. So it's okay. Uh, you guys make me think about what I'm doing. So the answer or the difference here is the new net operating income of three grand. Okay. Three grand. So there we go. Sales volume is a thousand. Remember, it's between five hundred and fifteen hundred. I don't know where I got the two thousand. That's okay. So once again, here we made nine hundred times the new sales price of twenty-two. So this uh, new net operating income is three grand. Okay, so that's what it should be, and they are, and they are correct. And the difference between the two is a thousand. If they were to say, what is the increase of the net operating income? Okay, but I want to make this green because it's right. Good. Well, I'm testing them out. Okay, and by the way, that was number six. All right, number six. Let's go to number seven now. Okay, so we're going to do a little more of this moving things around. So we're going to start with uh what we have at the top and i'll try to pay better attention all right so number seven okay uh it says so we're just going to copy one of these and make a new one uh that way we can watch what it was to what they want it to be so it says if the variable cost per unit increases by a dollar so variable cost increases by a dollar. So, so 13 here, which makes our contribution margin different. So this is up a dollar, all right? So that one's up a dollar. Then our advertising increases by 1,500. So this is up. 1500 so we want 7500 there and unit sales increase by 250 so we got 1250 here now be careful uh, the sales price is the same but i've got to change where that is so it's 58 and 59 okay whoops 58 and 58. Oops. There it is. There it is. Okay. So one more time, just to make sure we got it. We made this go, we, we changed this, right? So sometimes you got to keep track. We changed that. We changed this. 
Okay, and we changed this. This is up, oop, this is up 250 in units, up 250 units. So it's nice to be able to plug all this in because now here's that net operating income, which should be right. Okay, net operating income. Those were three changes, right? Three changes. So 1250 is the right answer. Okay, 1250, check your work. We're about halfway done. Okay, let's go to number eight. Okay, now we're going to work on some break even. I like break even because uh, net operating income is zero. So you could actually work it backwards. So I'm just going to make another copy of this, and bring it down. And then I've got to fix, make sure that this is, okay, so this is 67 here. So I've got to redo my little formulas so that they're, all right. So now we're looking just like this one. Yep. All right, so now what is the break-even point in unit sales? Okay, so let me go get our break-even uh, formulas here. We'll just borrow these, make a copy and bring it over. Okay, so we want to break even in units. And then I think we're going to break even in sales dollars. That usually follows pretty closely. So I think this will be number nine. Okay, so the first one is break unit sales to break even. How many units are we going to sell to break even? So our fixed expenses are uh, $6,000. Our unit contribution margin, which is the dollar amount, unit contribution margin is eight. Okay, so equals eight. And now we're going to get our break even in units equals 6,000 divided by eight. 750. So 750 should be our break even units. How many units do we have to sell to break even? 750. Okay, so that should be correct. Let's see if they have us do our dollars next. They do. So I'll go get that uh, formula, but you can usually get to it pretty quickly. Um, by if they give you enough information. So, so here you could just pretty much take your break even units equals break even units. And you could take it times your sales price. Sales price is 20 bucks. So this is an easy way to do it, okay? Um, and I wanna make sure to label everything dollars. So $8, this is $20. Okay, now our, say, our break even in sales dollars is 750 times, and then we're going to test it, times 20, 15,000. Now let's try it this way, okay? 15,000 is our break-even sales dollars, okay? Um, but let's go ahead and use our fixed. So we're going to use this. If you're using the formula, but now you have to use, so our fixed expenses are here. Our contribution margin ratio. Be careful, contribution margin ratio. That is 40%. Yep, 40%. So equals 
40%. So our break even, and this will be break even sales dollars. So it should come out to exactly the same value. Okay, and it's supposed to. Okay, so 15,000 is our break even sales dollars. Okay, the next one, how many units must be sold to achieve a target profit of 5,000? Oh, let me go ahead and put in, let me put in our 750 and voila, here's our break even, right? Here is, boop, 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 let me go back. That's our top one. Don't wanna mess with that. Let's put 750 here to break even. Break even. You could even start with break even down here with a zero and work your way backwards, right? Because break even means that your fixed expenses equal your contribution margin. And you could you could figure out how many you had to sell that way. But anyway, so just wanted to show you that you could test it. Okay, so let's do 10 is a target, target, uh, profit okay similar kind of similar to break even so we want 10 here and we're going to use this i'm just going to keep making a copy okay we're on 10 now oop and then we got to change our all right, so this formula here, we don't want it. We want it on 90. Okay, and then this one is 90. All right, so now let's get the formulas for the number of units for a target profit of 5,000. So if we put 5,000 here, I'm going to put target profit 5,000. There it is. All right. So let me go get those formulas for the target. And then the other one. So once again, when you're working with the target, they want to know how many units and what are the sales dollars, just like they would for break even. Okay. So I think this is number 10 and then this will be number 11. So we can get that ready. Okay. So the target profit is 5,000. Okay, so target profit. 5,000. What is our fixed expenses? It is 6,000. Okay, we add those two together. total. And then what's our unit contribution margin? Okay, it is $8. So let me change all of this to eight or to dollars, sorry, dollars. Yeah. Okay, so then How many do we need to sell? So we're going to take this total here. And I haven't totaled it yet. Okay, so 11,000 divided by 8. So target units. Target profit units. How many do we have to sell? Right, so divided by 8. We have to sell 1375, and that's just a number. That is not dollars. So let's see if that's true. Let's see if we put 1375, all else is equal. Hey, there it is. There it is. Yep. Isn't that cool? All right. So, how many do we have to sell? We have to sell 1375 in units have a target profit of five grand. So here is the answer, right? So now what does that equal in sales dollars, right? 
Well, you could do it the easy way because the sales price, right? We could take the number of units times the sales price right here of 20 bucks. And it should be, boop, 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 hold on. Okay, so let's just get the sales price here so we don't get too confused. Here's our sales dollars. Uh, target target profit sales dollars. You always need to repeat what you've just found because sometimes you forget. Target profit units, sales dollars, sorry, sales dollars. We just found the units. So then the sales price times the number of units, and then these need to be dollars. Mm -hmm. Need to be dollars. Okay, so 27,500, I believe, is number 11. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I thought they would want that for the target. Let me go back. Nope. Just how many units? So we did this one just for kicks. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's not very funny. Oh, well. If they would have asked us, we would have been ready. All right, let's move on to margin of safety. What's the margin of safety? Okay, so margin of safety is how much extra we budgeted versus, all right, so let's let's read this. As it is here, let me just say here, copy, bring this down. So let me go get those um, formulas so you can see them. Okay, margin of safety. I think we need both. Yep, we do. So margin of safety. And this is for 11 for both. Okay, so... Okay, so what's the budgeted dollars, right? Is 20,000. Oh, uh, well, they didn't even make us answer that. We still need the dollars. Okay, so let me go sales dollars targeted. Okay, so we do need this. Targeted profit sales dollars. All right, so let's see. What's the sales price again? 20 bucks, all right? And then we do the math here and it should be 27,500. 27,500, yep, that's what it is. So that's your targeted profit sales dollars. Um, it's not the targeted profit that we need. We need the break even. So we're going to go back up here. Here, our break even sales dollars are 15,000. So I'm confusing myself again. So hold on, let's go. Total budgeted sales. Okay, it is total budgeted sales is 20,000. Sorry. Then you need break even dollars sales dollars, okay, break even sales dollars up here, budgeted sales, break even sales dollars are 15, remember that? Yep, there they are, 15, and then the difference is your margin of safety, margin of safety in dollars. Okay, so we need to subtract Okay, so margin of safety in dollars is 5,000. These are all dollars. Oop. Okay, this is the one we want. So that's how much extra cushion we have 
before we hit break even. Okay, so 5,000. And then we need to know a percentage. Okay, so then we take our margin of safety dollars here. And then we divide by the budgeted amount. That equals that, all right? And then the budgeted amount, total budget, total budgeted sales. And I should say total budget in sales, do in, in dollars, in sales dollars. Now we're going to do a division problem, okay? Because we want the percentage. Anyway, the only way you can get a percentage is to divide. So margin of safety percentage. Okay, so we're going to find out. Here's our margin. And how does that compare to our total budget? And we need a percentage. 25%, yep, 25%. So you say, is that good or bad? Depends on the industry, depends on what you're used to having, depends on what you're comfortable with, okay? So now we want the degree of operating leverage. Okay, so now we're ready for leverage. And this has to do with... Um, all right, so I am going to get the formulas for operating leverage. I think it's up here. Yeah, it is. Okay. The leverage uh, is, how, is how much net income will go up compared to a sales increase. Okay, so let me see if the next one, yeah. All right, so let's go back. Let's get this degree of operating leverage. So our contribution margin and divide it by our net operating income. Okay, what is the degree of operating leverage? So it's a number, it's not dollars, it's, so contribution margin right here. So we want contribution margin dollars. Okay, so total contribution margin. Total contribution margin. So let's make that equal 8,000. And then our net operating income is 2000. So net operating income. Okay, now we want degree of operating leverage. So we take 8,000 and divide by two, and I believe we get four. Okay, so there's our degree of operating leverage right there. So that's how we find that. And so we can use that in the next one, which would be 13, to figure out if, whoop, if sales went up a certain percentage, how much would our profit go up? So we want 13 here. So using the degree of operating leverage, what is the estimated percent increase in net operating income that would result from a 5% increase in unit sales? So I am gonna go get this other, here it is, here it is. Okay, so let's copy that and bring it in. Okay, so now the degree of operating leverage is four. 
So we'll put degree here. equals four, and then the percent of, okay, so percent of percent, per, okay, percent increase sales. So they said that it's going to go up 5%, so we want to change this five to a percentage, okay, not 500, <laughs> percent but five all right so you take these times each other to get your percent change in net operating income percent change in net operating income now i know this is kind of tough all right so four times five right okay and we want to see that percentage as well Right, four times five is 20%. You say, what does that mean? That means that just a 5% increase in sales. So what would 5% be? So let's see here. Let's And if you don't know, we can calculate it, right? So let's do equals a thousand times 1.05. Okay, so... Now, now we've changed some things here, but uh, I'm gonna go back. Okay, let's just, all right. So let's see if that tells us. Okay. Um, all right. So what this says is just an increase of 5%, the net operating income will go up 20%. So you think it would go up the same, as sales, but it doesn't. So when this is higher, you have more leverage like you would on a tool if you're trying to move something heavy, right? So leverage, that's what they're talking about. So the higher that degree of leverage, the more sensitive income is to a difference in sales. Okay, so, uh, all right. So now we're going to change up just a couple of things. And I want to make sure, yeah. All right, so now we're going to change a few things. So, you know, we need to copy this again before we start making changes so we can compare what we've done, okay? So they're wanting us to modify a few things here for 14, and we're almost done. So let's put this down here and then we'll put 14 down here. Okay, so now let's see what they want. Okay, they want the new degree of operating leverage. Whoop. So let's see if we can copy this down here for this one. No, doesn't like it. Okay. Okay, that's all right. All right, so what are they wanting us to change? It says, assume the amounts of the total variable expenses and total fixed expenses were reversed. Okay, so, um, and the total fixed expenses are 12,000. Okay, in other words, so we want 12,000 here, and we want 6,000 here. Does that make sense? So, and this is, that, that way we know we can compare, so, we used to have 12,000 here and now it's here and 6,000 is here. We still have the same net operating income, okay? But our contribution margin is different. So we're gonna have different leverage, okay? So our total contribution margin is 14 
And even though we still have the same net income, our degree of operating leverage is seven, right? Last time it was four. So whatever the increase is in sales is gonna be multiplied by seven, right? Yeah. So now we'll just borrow this and put what their change is gonna be. So now we're gonna see an even greater change in net operating income, okay? So, okay, so now the net, okay, the degree is seven, it was four, and their increase in sales is 5%. So, wow, 35% increase in operating, okay? 35% increase in operating. So if we made a 5% difference, okay, uh, now, nope, let's go back. A 5% increase in sales with an operating leverage of seven is seven times five. So uh, net income will, will increase 35%. So that's even more because the last one was just 20, right? So one more time, just ignore this, ignore the stuff that's going on down here and we'll make sure we got it right. And you guys need to do your set of 15. Okay, so one more time, if I take 5%, then that's adding 50 items, right? Right now it's $2,000, right? $2,000 is the profit. By just adding 5% more of sales, it now is 4,000, okay? And let's see, 4,000 divided by... 2,000 is what? So 4,000 divided by 2,000 is, should be 35% if my numbers are 20%. Uh, oh, that's the, there it is. That's that degree of operate. Okay, so don't, I'm not gonna change anything because there we go, back to that, um, because it'll mess it up. Oop, 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 hold on. Let me let me do one thing. Okay, let me make sure this is in the right spot. Uh-oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's good. Let me let me change something here. I just want to show you this. It should work. 145. There we have it. And then this is gonna be one. This times, oh, I'm sorry, this times uh, here, all right, so we want, okay, and they said it would flip-flop, which we did, okay, we're still at seven, so let me see if I can get the change to happen um, without like I said, don't look, don't look at that operating leverage because, right. So if I change this, aha, see it's up seven hundred dollars. So seven hundred dollar increase. That's the change. The the change increase divided by operating. Okay, uh, so the change, and it was 2,000, right? So if you go up 700 and you had 2,000, okay, what is the percentage change? So you would take 700 divided by 200, and hopefully it should be 35%. Hey, we did it. Woohoo! Okay, now don't pay any attention to this because this is feeding from up here. So I'll take it back, okay, take it back. But you can test it and run it through, right? So, okay, you know me, I've got to do it. So let me do this one more time. I like to make sure we're 
Okay, so let me do a whole nother one. So if we increased it, 1050, okay, and we want it to be 172, okay, and we want this to be 172. We see this $700 difference. So we had 2000, now we have 27. So here's the new income, the new of 2700, the old of 2000. And so the difference, so the percentage change, so increase change equals $700, okay? And then if you wanna know how much it changed, okay, you can, you can see that it changed by $700 but the percentage change comes in from dividing the old. So here's the formula for percentage change. I wanna teach you it anyway. Percentage change equals new minus old, whatever that is, divided by old, okay? And that's what we're doing here, right? So we're taking the new minus the old, here's the change. And now we're gonna divide by the old. The old amount is 2000. So the percentage change and the fact that it went up, it's gonna be a positive. So 700 divided by the old amount, 2000, and that should be 35%. There we have it. Okay, so I've proven that probably more than I needed to. You probably have turned me off by now. That's all right. Thank you very much. You continue on with the others and you should be fine. All right. So I'll stop my share and say goodbye. Thanks for hanging in there. We're moving on.